Hey everyone, Boozer here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to go over the brand new fusion that was just announced, um, Oella, a brand new Sylvan Watcher. Um, and we're going to have um, a little bit of speculation um, time uh, on her partner, Altan of the Shell, uh, as well as I discovered some lure uh, for the pair. So we'll go over some of that as well. Uh, it's a little bit of an interesting read the lore of this game, but obviously it's not the main draw of, of Raid. Uh, but I thought it would be interesting to share. Um, so I'll share my opinions on the new fusion and uh, how best to approach this as a free-to-play player, at least uh, the way I would approach this. So just going to go over her kit real quick. So Oella, the Sylvan Watcher, so part of the brand new uh, fa faction. Um, it's probably... You know, obviously it's going to help um, the faction if you have more champions to fill out your roster for faction wars, which shouldn't happen for at least maybe another, probably another year. Uh, but still, it's a fusion, so it's technically like obtainable. So let's go over her kit. She, I mean, she looks awesome. She uh, looks like a fairy, I guess, with the wings, butterfly wings. Uh, very magical looking. Uh, Still mixing in the wood elf uh, aesthetic as well. So really, really cool. You see little hearts here for Valentine's Day, little hearts here. Uh, okay, so her A1, Flutter Fluster, attack one enemy, uh, places 80%, 100% chance for decreased speed for two turns. Uh, irresistible if Altan is on the same team. So at its base at its base so 100 percent decreased speed like we're talking about like somebody like maybe stagnite stagnite comes to mind as a comparable a1 decreased speed which is not 100 percent 10 20 50 so 50 percent uh decreased speed or on two turns so two hits is about um what's the math on that two hits 50 percent So 75% chance to hit. So Oella, being a legendary, has 100% chance to hit. So a better A1 than Alt uh, than Stagnite. Uh, but you can argue that Stagnite has a double hit, which is um, maybe better in some spots. Also chances to proc like Warmaster and stuff. Um, so so far okay. Uh, you can, it's not going to be, it doesn't seem as good or as, um, I guess, as good or as versatile as like an AoE uh, decrease speed, even if it's a lower percentage. So like Mother Side Bell has a 50% chance uh, AoE uh, decrease speed, which is probably more preferred than this single target one. So a little bit uh, like mid-range A1. Uh, her A2, Hand of Spring, 4 turn cooldown down to 3 with books, heal all allies by 30% of their max HP, increases the duration of all ally buffs. So when I think about this skill, I think of uh, Godseeker and Yuri. She has a heal and a uh, uh, buff extension. So we can compare um, Godseeker and Yuri, which is an epic again. So you're comparing epics against a legendary here. Heals all allies, books down to 3 turn, heals by 15% of their max HP, then decrease the duration of all buffs on enemies. So there's a second element to this um, skill compared to Oella. So you get less healing, but then you get the decreased duration of buffs. Uh, you need accuracy for this. And then you get the increased duration of buffs. So Godseeker being just an epic versus Oella, a legendary, with basically the same move, with a bigger heal, but you lose the deb the buff the debuff. Uh, you lose the buff decrease on your enemies. So it's, I mean, it's kind of a wash. It's almost a wash. But this is a legendary, and Godseeker's an epic. So same kind of situation with Stagnite. Stagnite's an epic, and she's a legendary. So so far, like, you know, you're comparing them to like good epics. She's basically a good epic level right now. Um, so if this was 30% her own HP, then then we can have something to talk about, I think. But uh, their max HP, it's, uh, it's going to be not as good. 
Uh, Morphosis or A3, six turn down to three. That's really bad. I hate these super long cooldowns. And then you require books to um, bring them down to a, to a reasonable uh, cooldown. Because that means you have to put books into her for her to be very useful. Uh, because six turns for this move is just uh, not good enough. So it fills the turn meter by 30%. So similar to like uh, Lissandra. Lissandra turn meter boost, I think. Um, it's a big one, big turn meter boost. And then you place an increased resistance on all allies for two turns. So the increased resistance is a pretty rare ability, rare buff right now. Um, honestly, like there's not too many places where you can use this effectively. Um, this champion's obviously targeted towards Iron Twins, uh, which has a very high uh, resistance threshold if you want to resist the Iron Twins. That's if you're not running like an unkillable team already. Um, and then the other place where increased resistance might be useful would be Bommel. Um, she's weak affinity to Bommel. So, you know, you're not, I don't know how you're going to squeeze her into that team. Um, Hydra, you can run lower resistance and then increase your resistance so you can play a, play against the mischief head maybe to steal stop stealing your stuff. Uh, but maybe something like that. Um, but so far, it's, you know, we haven't re really found a super good place for increased resistance so far. Uh, and then her passive, whenever an ally loses 15% of their max HP from one hit, which happens, oh, like decent amount of time in arena, but like maybe PVE, not so much. So if you lose that much health, you get a 15% continuous heal. That's not that good. Uh, places a 15% continuous heal for two turns on that ally, and then instantly activate it if all 10 is on the same team. Okay, so I think Wither, her passive places a, f a continuous heal on a random ally with the lowest HP, I believe, every turn, regardless. So this one is only when you lose HP. So. I mean, to me, it doesn't seem that good. Um, sometimes you can lose the HP and like die before you can get the benefit of the continuous heal. So I don't know. I'm I'm not feeling this right now. Uh, resistance in all dungeons. So obviously, the dungeons um, focus is for Iron Twins. Uh, Iron Twins focus. So uh, I mean, so far I'm not too impressed with her kit. Uh, I think her big draw might be um i mean her whole kit is like okay it's not bad uh but i wouldn't think she's like super super top tier right now um as a healer because it's based on her, uh, their max hp it's she's not a really good healer <laughs> so it you're gonna have to bank on this uh, increased resistance i mean it's a full uptime increased resistance because you go increased resistance and then you go increased duration um, and then you just keep cycling back and forth, and you can speed up your team too, which is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. She's mid-tier. Um, she probably wouldn't fit into a lot of teams. You have to make a, uh, have a specific use for her. She's not like a general purpose uh, champion. So I think uh, we can speculate a little bit about Altan, uh, Altan now, how well he will be. Uh, most likely he'll be a Void Legendary um, just because of how they do the Valentine's uh, pairing. So usually one champion will be um, regular affinity, which is usually the the fusion will be regular affinity because that's how they make money. They need the Void Legendary to be the, the sought-after one. So all <clears throat> um, 10 will probably be the Void Legendary. Uh, all 10 of the Shell sounds like he's going to be a defensive uh, legendary and in my opinion he's probably going to be incorporating taunt into his uh, kit so he probably has a taunt in his kit maybe a provoke maybe a big shield and he probably has a passive that protects Oella or brings her back to life or sacrifices himself to bring her back to life that's my guess um, but I can see like a defensive um, I can see a defensive uh, champion uh, to bring her back to uh, to basically protect her uh, in some way because the way I speculate this is because of the lure 
uh, I'll read you guys the lure real quick. I know you guys might not be interested in this part, so you guys can skip ahead. Uh, but I'll go over the lure. So this is kind of what he looks like. Uh, it's pretty cool, actually. So the tale of Altan and the shell of Oella, a fey queen, so she's a fey queen, began in the forlorn years following the scouring of the Great Grove. So the Sylvan Watchers have triumphed against Siroth, the cost was dire. Great swaths of the Mistwood have been burned and its core ruined by corruption. Many Sylvan remain lost to bloodthirsty madness. To this day, the Watchers and their fey allies launch forays into the forest in hopes of reclaiming their home. On one such for undertaking, a young Sylvan named Altan met a radiant fey monarch, obviously Oella. Renowned for her empathy, Queen Oella was heartbroken by the atrocities inflicted upon the Mistwood and had sworn to restore the wondrous paradise to what it once was. She was wise and charming and beloved by many, but it was her passion for her cause and love of life that captivated Altan's heart and inspired him to seek her out again. Altan's curiosity had amused Oella at first, and she humored the elven warrior with a handful of chance meetings. So she's like teasing him. <laughs> she learned that Altan was sagacious, sagacious in his own right, kind-hearted and as dedicated to Miss Wood as Oella herself. She was even more surprised by how driven he was to learn and master the ways of her kind. This was a daunting task, even for one attuned to the rhythm, the energy which permeates the Mistwood, so the rhythm is an energy. <laughs> uh, okay, and the beings who dwell near within it. As decades pass, okay, so they're very old, Altan rose to great esteem among the Sylvan Watchers, his accord with the Fae earning him the position of envoy to Oel's court. Their curiosity in one another evolved into tr trust and respect and turned into friendship. Over time, this became love, hence Valentine's Day. The other fair folk disapproved. Oella cared not. She inducted Altan into her court as her knight and champion. So at this point, uh, you kind of get the feeling that he's like, he's going to be like her protector type of champion. And the reason I describe his kit that way is basically that would just kind of fit into this whole lore. I would be really surprised if he was like an attack based champion like uh, Alil. <laughs> <laughs> like that would be totally surprising um many ventures towards uh led to many ventures together led the lovers to chart remnants of the great grove itself there oella and her handmaiden sought to find the source of lingering corruption and a way to heal it but all they found was death twisted monstrosities maddening fey and sylvans assailed them on all sides Oella's handmaids would have been surely perished were it not for Altan's courage and skill. Heavily outnumbered, he fought with the ferocity of a dozen warriors and brought the queen's retune time to withdraw. His injuries were grievous, and he would not have lived were it not for a miracle born from Oella's love. She held Altan and poured her essence into the terrible wounds he had suffered. It was an act guided by desperation and instinct in equal measure, and it bound their spirits together. Altan awoke soon after and changed. He was no longer just a sylvan elf. Fey magic flowed through his veins. He could feel its power, and to his joy, he felt closer to Oella than he could ever imagine. Upon the return, Oella named Altan as her consort, a faithful friend and ally to rule. His bravely sacrifice had earned them, earned him a modicum of respect among the Fey. But it may be many centuries still before the Fey folk accept Altan as one of their own. All right, so you guys can kind of see like what his theme is. He's going to be a protector type champion, and perhaps he has some kind of passive that will resurrect or uh, resurrect himself or resurrect Oella. So that's kind of the gist. Uh, so that would be my speculation, but I'd be really surprised if he was an attack based champion. Um, so what would I do as a free-to-play player um, for these type of fusions? Um, it's already been speculated that this fusion would be considered a traditional fusion. So it would use champions, you would have to level them up, and then you would have to um, fuse them, basically sacrifice them to uh, summon this champion. Um, so these fusions are generally pretty tough. So uh, you have to have some resources prepared. Consider, like, if you're watching this video, now you are prepared. You're aware of this fusion. So you have to 
uh, spend the next little bit of time gathering resources, mainly shards, and uh, you have to have energy, uh, obviously uh, enough training materials, uh, potions, chickens uh, to handle uh, this fusion. It's usually a little bit more resource intensive and obviously time intensive because you have to do uh, more manual training and uh, ascending and all that stuff. You can't just auto or uh, RSL helper everything. Um, what's my opinion on this champion? I mean, right now it's kind of mid tier. Uh, it's probably not going to help most end game teams. And for an early game player, it's definitely not going to help you because usually early game, mid game, don't really focus on resistance. So uh, having a resistance buff um, might not be too useful. Um, although once you do start getting resistance into your teams, having a buff like this does help uh, lessen the load on the gear. Um, but he, she doesn't really bring enough. I feel like she needs like a revive, like a revive on death for herself or a revive team member or something to make her a little bit more strong. Like she's clean, right? She's a queen fae. She should be stronger than this. Um, so to me, it just feels like um, like a mid average. Uh, champion and the fact that she takes legendary books really really sucks like if she was an epic yeah that's great if she was an epic she's totally good like good uh, but as a legendary it's really really tough uh, to justify spending resources on her uh, I think personally I would probably still go for her because my motto is I basically go for every legendary uh, fusion because you never know when you uh, need the double for like faction guardians and it's easier to basically get a guaranteed champion like basically if you have the resources and time but I totally understand if you guys want to skip this one because I don't think she's going to be immediate help for most people um, and for faction wars like we don't have too much for faction wars but uh, if you guys went for the guarantee for Nia, she's really strong. Like, as a support, she's really strong support. She has the ally protection strengthen on a three turn. And then she has a remove, she has a it's kind of like a cleanse. She's an a AoE speed down. Really, really good. Like, this is a great move. So, she's a great champion. Um, who else? This is a great attack champion. Lots of different things happening multi hits, turn meter, lots of buffs attack champion and if you have this guy the mushroom guy like he just solo stuff um even with his nerf his heal is still awesome from his kit he's one of the easier champions to build to solo dragon he can solo ice golem with very easy requirements um so he'll definitely do faction wars easily um the legendaries have been kind of underwhelming um, I got Elva from the guarantee, and she's all you really need, because then she's just insane, right? The cleanse, she has the revive, um, and her passage just heals, so much healing. Uh, but the rest of the legendaries are kind of underwhelming, but you don't need the legendaries. Like, you just need this guy, and like, I don't know, maybe Nia. Not even Nia, you, or Dudan. Dudan can do it. He's very, he has defensive shields, uh, taunt, strength, and, he, you know, he's just a tank right so and there's going to be time so they're going to start releasing things still so you don't need this fusion i'm just like you just don't need this fusion but i'm not going to say like don't do it you should obviously do it if you have resources and time mainly time um so but if you miss it it's not the end of the world i think because uh i think even if the combination ability with altan of the shell is insane uh, it's very difficult for you to get all time because he'll likely be a void legendary um, so I wouldn't even I wouldn't even consider that a thing um, so at this moment I would probably go for her just because I'm kind of a completionist um, I have the resources and I have the time to obtain her so it's not gonna be an issue for me so I'll be doing videos uh, along the way for the fusion 
but if you want to skip this, I totally understand. Uh, she's not going to be super helpful uh, immediately anyways, I can think of, uh, for most accounts, early, mid, or end game. Uh, but yeah, anyways, if you guys re uh, reach the end of the video, uh, I appreciate that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. hope you guys learned something. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye.